However, 1911, the last of the Yanni Indians, Ishi, was discovered in Oroville, I can't believe I remember all this, in Oroville, California, Northern California, and there was a bounty on Indians back then. You could shoot a man Indian and get 25 bucks. You shoot in 1911? Yep. They had bounties on them. And instead of shooting this Yanni, this last Indian, they called the local sheriff and they took Ishii into custody and they called uh, some scientists and uh, uh, paleontologists um, from California University by the name of uh, Saxton Pope. And Saxton Pope came and studied Ishii as a, as a, Aboriginal, the last Saxon Pope of Pope and Young. That's right. And then he contacted his buddy Art Young, who also studied in that genre. And they discovered Ishii, and they were fascinated by his stealthy awareness of the wilderness and his archery control with his funny little style of shooting the bow with his thumb and getting close and doing uh, ice cold river bathing before the hunt to cleanse himself to be worthy of the beast. So Fred Bear witnessed the film that Pope and Young eventually made of them becoming consumed with the mystical flight of the arrow. Now this was in the 20s and 30s and they put a newsreel out and went all over the country and showed this newsreel of hunting with the bow and arrow by Saxon Pope and Art Young. Shooting grizzly bears in Yosemite and going to Africa, filling lions full of arrows because they, they weren't really as good as these sheep, so they'd fling a lot of arrows. And these animals were pretty relaxed, almost tame because they'd never been hunted like that before. And so Fred Bear come from Pennsylvania around that time um, to work at the FOMO company uh, building cabinets for the new radio they just invented and the wood dashboards for the Ford Motor Company. And he was also making bows, uh, handmade U wood and or Osage orange orange bows in his little archery shop with Nels Grumley. I can't believe I remember that. Nels Grumley, one of the greatest boyers of all time. So my dad got the archery bug because Fred defied the trend of easier hunting, easier long range. You didn't have to be very stealthy to shoot a deer at 500 yards. They don't even know you're there. All you have to do is be a disciplined marksman, which is a discipline and a great accomplishment unto itself. And it was a new challenge for long-range ballistic capability. Well, Pope and Young and a handful, Fred Bear and Nels Grumley, went and saw this newsreel of these guys, these doctors, these uh, professors hunting all over the world with these handmade bows. And Fred was already into it. And he was, I'll be damned, this... I didn't realize you could do that. And so now people, after seeing the Pope and Young newsreel, started asking Fred to make bows, and it, it spread. So he started the Bear Archery Company, late 20s, early 30s. And he moved to Grayling up in the northern part of Michigan where the wilderness was, and they had cut down all the trees. So there was this new growth of ideal wildlife habitat because not many animals can live in an old-growth forest, an owl or two, but you need low-level escape sanctuary and browse that the animals can uh, access. And so Fred was now promoting archery in Michigan, won all the uh, uh, National Field Archery Championships along with Ann Marston. It's awesome. And so my dad was a follower because he'd come back from World War II, and he needed that escape. He needed that cleansing to get away from that horror, which is why they never talked about it. And so we'd go up north every year, October 1st, the Nugent family in the Ford station wagon, and I had my little bow and arrow with the suction cups, and I'd shoot stuffed animals off the couch. But my dad would walk the woods with his real bow, and we'd stop at this little uh, uh, brick shack that said bear archery, and I had no idea. And so I was already into bows and arrows shooting all the time. I was obsessed. I was down the river every day. No baseball, no football, no hockey. Bows and arrows, bows and arrows, critters. I think I had the Songbird World Slam by the time I was eight. And, uh, and so now I'm meeting this tall, lanky gentleman named Fred Bear. It didn't register with me until I started seeing him on the cover of True Magazine and sporting magazines and, and Life Magazine with a grizzly bear and an elephant and a tiger and a lion in the newsreels. And I'm going, I'm shooting river rats, which is so thrilling I can't even describe it. And here's this long, lanky, tall, lanky guy that was building bows in this rust, rustic shop in northern Michigan on my way to my favorite thing in life, 
October 1st opening day of archery season as a six, seven, eight year old boy. And we'd have chocolate milk and cherry pie with this Fred Bear guy. Now it's registering. This is the Chuck Berry of bow hunting. This is it. This is the guy. So I became enamored with him. And he was kind to me and he'd show me stuff. But I got to hang out with him as I grew. By the time I was 16, we moved to Chicago because my dad got transferred. But I got to visit with Fred Bear at least every other October. Never hunted with him. And I'm now I started Amboy Dukes. I'd already had a great band win the Battle of the Bands in Michigan with the Lures. We opened up for the Supremes and the Bull Brummels at Cobo Hall. Wow. And so now I'm in Chicago shooting my bone arrow all the time. Started the Amboy Dukes, playing like a madman. Graduated in 67, went back to Michigan the two years later, and immediately went up to Grayling, where now there's this huge cathedral, Bear Archery, and Fred Bear is like the dude. He's like the sporting dude because he taught the long-range marksman that there's an intimacy. There's a, a better learning process and a more important lesson to not kill the animal, but to understand your relationship with the animal. And to try to use those God-given gifts I mentioned a moment ago to penetrate the otherwise impenetrable defense system of game. Because they are sneaky, elusive, crafty. God made them to get away from guitar players with sharp sticks. And so this caught on because people go, you know, I kill my deer every year with my 30-30 now with the 30 out 6 and Roy Weatherby long range. I wonder if I'm a badass enough to get close to a deer with a bow and arrow so it caught on like wildfire and they made the first fred got the first legal season in michigan at the allegan state park on november 1st 1947 where george nichols my buddy got the first legal buck in michigan with a bow and arrow on that morning and so i knew these are the guys i hang with these are the founders. These were the, you were, I was at the Concord Bridge of Archery. Mm -hmm. And so Fred had embraced me and it was real suspicious of the long haired, hippie looking, you know, rocking maniac, Motor City madman. But all of his friends went, no, no, he's not into drugs. He's, in fact, he's anti drug and he's always promoting archery. I shot my bow and arrow on stage forever. I'd shoot flaming arrows at skulls and a big illegal, I think it was a felony, a big turkey vulture I had stuff, but it looked great backlit, you know, and I'd shoot that fucker off the amps at night. And people didn't know whether to shit or go blind. Is this wild man screaming the bird lands, <laughs> making all this outrageous racket. I come out with a bow and arrow and a flaming arrow and blow up a turkey vulture. <laughs> what more do you want? And so Fred look, got looked past the insanity of the fear factor of rock and roll and he finally admitted to me he said every sporting goods show i go to ted all the young people anybody under 30 all they want to know is if i know ted nugent because that was the first time they ever saw bow and arrow and they read my do my interviews about the the spirit the cleansing of escaping the insanity of whatever your job description might be mine being maniacal rock and roll i need to shut the fuck up Take a deep breath, get my bow and arrow, let my guitars breed, head back to the woods, and live. And, and remember who I am and what I'm here for. And I never killed a deer. I was just a little too uppity, and we didn't know what we were doing back then. You were but, too uppity? You think? What do you mean? I just, I'm high energy. <laughs> So you're too. I do. I, too I wasn't loud, the stealthy too, guy. Right. Well, I don't know about too loud. I mean, I could walk. Through. I learned from Fred. I learned to walk toe first, and I learned to go around anything you instead of stepping over, and to stay in the shadows. So I knew the maneuvers. But coming out of a tour and playing 350 nights a year, and then you get a couple days off during November, and you get the bow and arrow. It's hard to go from that to right. total silence. This, but you know what, Joe? What? I've mastered it oh i know you have finally i mean i did by well, the, you've been you've been by the doing 60s. it for a long time by the 60s i i don't know about mastered you'll never master it but i've mastered what the do you transition. say what do you say when people like the, one of the arguments about hunting that people bring up is why would you use a bow and arrow a bow and arrow is not as effective if you wanted to kill something you should use a gun there's people that don't hunt that think that hunting should only be one thing and it should only be killing the animal for meat whereas i think that someone who hunts definitely kills the animal for me but there's more there's more to the whole thing and have you ever seen me expound on that fun sport 
meat yeah. trophy. You can't hunt without having fun, or you won't do it. It's fun to challenge yourself. It's fun to get up in the well, dark. Some people the have a problem with that word. Well, right? they, they can kiss my ass. <laughs> <laughs> if it wasn't fun, none of us would do it. I understand your 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 take on it. They can kiss, kiss your ass, but you it means something to you. It's not as simple as like "fuck you." This is just how oh, we're going to do deep, it. Deep, deep yeah. fun is is being the greatest basketball three point shooter. Isn't that fun? It must be discipline he wouldn't yeah. do but it's all it's always fun it's because it's invigorating right and the bow and hunting is more invigorating because it's so difficult so it's difficult. borderline impossible yeah. fun sport <laughs> well i don't think sport hunting is good you shouldn't have sport how can you hunt without sport well don't you think that there's just too many of these words are poisoned there's like like yeah. trophy hunting by that, idiot that term, Tro you can't hunting. hunt without a trophy you know what i have on my wall in my northern cabin you're gonna you already are inclined to love me, but now you're really gonna you're going for it. you're gonna butt fuck me right here on the Whoa, show. That's um, not love. Well, it's um, metaphorically speaking. <laughs> um, well, it is for some of my buddies. Anyhow, so on the wall of my cabin in Northern Michigan is my first kill, November fifteenth, nineteen sixty nine, with my dad's pre sixty four model seven. Buck. Button buck. Did you hear the story? Yeah. And I took it to the taxidermist, yeah. and I said, I want this model. He said. You're going to mount this? And I People go, yeah, it's a buck. Button buck. button buck is a fawn of the year that has little buttons on his forehead, which is a legal deer with a doe tag, and I had that year. And I, and I said, it's a buck feel. You have to feel on the head to make sure it is a buck because it's such a little guy. And it's a legal deer, and it's a delicious deer. The deer of the year is a fawn. That's why we have this hunting season in the fall because now they're independent. They're not, they've been weaned. They're, they're independent animals. In fact, the, the button bucks are their asses get kicked by their mother to throw them out of the herd to get the hell out of the way for more breeding, which is what I do. And uh, and so I have that button buck mounted. Well, who's going to tell me that's not a trophy? The, 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 the experiences, the memories, the clothes, the bullets, the day, the sunrise, the crows, the sandhill cranes, the birds, the movement, the anticipation. And I got backstraps. I had fun ultimate discipline challenge sport ultimate meat ultimate protein the purest most organic before it was even hip and if you could i dare you to tell me that button buck is not a trophy i got i have woodchucks mounted <laughs> i got i shot a woodchuck in the eye with my grandson well i i have I have squirrels mounted. It's always a trophy. You mounted a squirrel? I uh, sure. I'm I'm the squirrel czar. Um, you know when you when you first start out and you kill that first squirrel, that's exciting stuff. 